YouTube is host to many radically different kinds of content, from vlogging to challenges, from video essays to streamers' VODs, and even a few heated gamer moments every once in a while that it prefers to abscond. But, despite the multiplicity of content it enables, the one category it seems particularly inept at platforming is healthy, functional relationships. Save a very select few here and there, it's almost inevitable that when two people's relationship moves from their private lives into the scope of their online personas, where it becomes the subject of content creation, it's simply a matter of time before it crashes and burns, usually with a heavily publicized fallout all over social media. With this being such a pattern, we must wonder why. Why is it that YouTubers have such a rotten track record when it comes to dating? Today, we'll be covering the case of Arcade Craniacs, or namely, how the relationship of Edward Centeno and Nicole Land not only ended on an extremely sour note in front of hundreds of thousands of fans, but was also revealed to have been doomed from the very start. The year was 2007, just a couple of years after YouTube had been created. At this point in time, making a career off of AdSense wasn't even a dream in the minds of people who posted their videos on the site, which was little more than a way to share home videos with your friends, only ever accidentally going viral, which was what being a web celebrity was called back then. Just to give you an idea of how prehistoric these times were, the troll face was a whole year away from being conceived. Meanwhile, a 15-year-old named Edward Centeno created a YouTube account called Superhero15-2007, where he would sporadically upload videos of himself doing tricks while skating, with no pretense of garnering any sort of online following. This went on for a few years, until in 2013, a video would be uploaded called Guy Cries Over Ex-Girlfriend, Original, where a now 21-year-old Edward would be spoofing another video, which was uploaded two days prior and was very popular at the time, of a guy lamenting his breakup. In the video, Edward appears to have over-the-top mascara tears streaming down his face, acting as a performative, overly dramatic, scorned lover, intermittently calling his ex-girlfriend who broke up with him a liar and declaring his love for her, at one point even pretending to have a heart attack. <sighs> Babe, look, I can see you from right here, babe. Look, it's you and me together, babe. Trust me. I fucking love you, babe. <laughs> this is one of the strangest acts of foreshadowing ever published on the internet, and soon, you'll come to see why. The years went by as the account drifted into complete inactivity, and it was probably during this period that Edward was working at Burger King as a manager, and was mostly not online whatsoever. That is, until January 1st of 2017, when Edward was walking home at 4am, probably after celebrating New Year's, when a stranger assaulted him with a steel pipe. This assault made Edward unable to work or even eat, as the attack not only severely damaged his upper lip, but also fractured his jaw. His lip ended up needing surgical repair from a plastic surgeon, which his insurance didn't cover. So he opened a GoFundMe to raise financial support for the medical bills, which actually racked up to the tune of $27,000. A relatively big Los Angeles skate park and collective called The Barracks made a Facebook post advertising for Edward's GoFundMe, which then managed to raise just a little over $9,000 from 487 donors. This resulting downtime from the recuperation had Edward trying to look for alternative sources of income. Six months later, in July 2017, the YouTube account Arcade Craniacs was created, with the express purpose of posting videos related to arcade games, which was already somewhat of a niche content genre on YouTube. For the most part, the person being seen on camera was his girlfriend Nicole, or Nikki, as she was usually referred to. While Edward's voice was often heard from behind the camera, he was seldom visible, most likely due to his then still healing facial scar which he tried to conceal whenever he was on camera. So we're at this video, the claw machine full of money. We have 510 comments. That, I don't know, that's a lot, okay? I tell you that much. Not much time elapsed between their channel's creation and their first successful video, How to Cheat at Carnival Games, which now has amassed a little over 700,000 views. We won a fidget spinner for losing. We just won a fidget spinner for losing. All right, so that's the video, guys. In that video's description, their Patreon account was being advertised, though it has since been deleted. The channel would continue to hone in the content and produce many other wildly successful videos, as well as some occasionally racy thumbnails 
with scantily clad or otherwise sexually exploitative pictures of Nicole. Because of this, the channel was targeted by the demonetization algorithm a few times, which Edward took to Twitter to complain about. I'll take a very brief break here to address Edward's Twitter account that was created at around the same time that the Arcade Craniacs channel was, and that, for whatever reason, he has a disturbing amount of attention dedicated to his bowel movements. What? What are you talking about? Ha ha ha. This dude tweeted about me. Ha ha ha. Plus, I was taking a poop and still am right now, so I have nothing to do. Don't eat Chipotle. Have you ever poop a demonic poop before? Well, I have. Uh, <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I'm unsure why this is, but I'm not here to judge. In any event, while the growth of the channel was already linearly going up over time and their arcade videos were frequently netting over a million views, it skyrocketed once 2020 and the lockdowns came around, which caused the arcades that they would routinely visit in order to shoot content to close down. This led them to make a pivot to 3am content, which is basically a genre of YouTube videos wherein, if you do certain things at 3am, creepy pasta characters come to life and try to kill you, or some Something like that. I'm hugging him! I'm hugging him! Oh, oh, no, dude, he, he didn't let go of my freaking hand, dude. Oh. In 2020, there were rumors going around that Chuck E. Cheese was going to close down, and they capitalized on this trend quite successfully, much to the joy of Edward, whose lifelong enjoyment of the pizza franchise got his family to nickname him Chucky. At around this time, they started frequently collaborating with Lissy Noel, a fellow arcade channel turned 3AM YouTuber, however unlikely that pipeline may be. Despite the evidence try hardish and view hungry nature of every facet of this kind of content, Craniac's videos had a twist to them. They had a semblance of self awareness and a sense of humor. Sure, they were still pandering as hard as possible to the YouTube algorithm that regularly feeds this crap to kids, but there were moments that you could actually call funny. Oh my god! What the? listening to the baby you guys he literally has a fat ass and i want to smack it oh, 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 oh. <laughs> this plus their other not so subtle titling thumbnail and hijink strategies to milk the content for as many views as possible, such as pretending that the channel was going to end, or doing the soy face and having arrows and red circles in every thumbnail, gave them a kind of meme status that launched their channel into orbit. At its absolute peak, the channel was getting millions of views on average, and the hideous, trashy aesthetic and overly obnoxious delivery that the videos had became a source of entertainment, causing some to hate watch the videos in the same way that someone may watch Nikocado Avocado. But this hate base eventually even evolved into a loyal following who genuinely enjoyed their videos for what they were. They had a real fan base who appreciated what they did and supported them as a couple. Two, one, go! <laughs> At this point, it looks like everything was on the up and up for Edward and Nicole. But as a wise man once said, if you ride like lightning, you'll crash like thunder. Sometimes, the best way to hide things is in plain sight. On the surface, it seemed as if Nikki and Edward were in a great relationship, collaborating towards their shared goal of growing their particular brand of YouTube content, regardless of how taxing or strange it could be, and being remarkably successful at it. However, behind the scenes, things were a lot darker than expected. On October 3rd, 2021, a video was uploaded on the Arcade Craniacs channel that had Nikki on the thumbnail, though she was nowhere to be seen in the video itself, which raised a few eyebrows. But this was nothing out of the ordinary. However, behind these scenes, unbeknownst to any of the viewers, they had broken up and were far from being on good terms. The channel kept uploading as if nothing had happened and still getting substantial amounts of views. But on October 12th, Nikki posted to her TikTok, Wabi Sabi. In the video, there was a caption which read, trying to have an appetite while you're going through a breakup. This puzzled the many fans of Craniacs that followed her on social media. What could this mean? Was she joking? The same day, Nikki would upload a video to the YouTube channel called Me Ranting in New York, where she would document her and her friend Anu, who was herself another successful TikToker, on their trip to New York, which she mentioned she would not have been able to do while in the relationship she was in. After some montage of the traveling, she begins talking about the breakup in a way that heavily suggested that her relationship with Edward was extremely bad for her. Another thing is that I literally threw up on myself one day ago, have not thrown up in many years. The last time I threw up on myself 
was the night that I met my ex-boyfriend Edward. So isn't that weird? Isn't that kind of quirky? It's like, it's pretty quirky. People's online relationships that are couple goals, like people's relationships that are in the social media spotlight are not always what they seem. So this may seem very abrupt to you guys, but it's not to me. It's not in my life, you know, abrupt. I broke up with Edward several weeks ago for very, 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 very valid reasons. A couple days later, most likely due to people rapidly commenting on all of his accounts, asking him about it, Edward got on TikTok Live and decided to clear the air. He would go on to cry throughout the entirety of this stream, blaming himself for the breakup, saying how good of a person she was and how he didn't deserve her. Like, I don't deserve nothing in life. I don't deserve nothing, dude. I, she's, she's, Nicole is like the most, most amazing woman in the world, dude. I, I fucking love her, dude. She's such a, she's such a fucking a genuine soul. Such a nice person. She's such a nice person, dude. And I, I messed everything up in the beginning of our relationship, dude. I'm just, a, I'm just a, a really, like a crap human, dude. Like, like, I don't, like, don't get me wrong. Like me and Nicole, we had a lot of times where we're like, we love each other so much. And we've done so many, like, like cool cool things together but it's just like in the beginning dude i was just so like i was just so messed up from like things that happened in my life and and like i trust me guys nicole didn't do nothing at all she's been the most nicest most most caring fucking loving person ever it's just all on me i'm just a i'm just a crap human dude i'm literally just a crap human i don't deserve nothing in life I don't deserve anything, you know? Edward's very public display of regret, as well as his purposeful, though vague, admission of guilt, persuaded many people to flock over to his side. The audience members took notice with the contrast of how poorly he was dealing with it, saying that he was struggling to even record new content for the channel, juxtaposed against how Nicole addressed it in a much more emotionally composed way during a trip to New York, and implying that Edward was at fault. Because of this, despite the details and reasons for the breakup still being completely unknown, the public began resenting Nicole for her role in initiating it, which she took offense to. Many people commented on any posts of hers with another guy saying, that's not Edward, which led her to post this TikTok about a month after the breakup, complaining about these stragglers left over from the Craniacs fanbase that were still following her just to attack her. The post inflamed the commenters even more, which prompted Nicole to make a series of Instagram stories clarifying that the reason why it was such a sensitive topic and why the comments annoyed her was because she'd allegedly been groomed by Edward since age 17. And due to the abusive nature of the relationship, being reminded of it all the time was very vexing for her. After a long period of awkward silence from both of them, now it seems that things were coming to a head. Soon following her allegations that Edward was a groomer, Edward took to his stories to counter her claims, and this time, his tune would be nothing like the last time he talked about Nicole. I'll mostly let his demeanor speak for itself. What the fuck I just read on Nicole's story making the worst fake fucking accusation about me? Now, I have not even talked about her in fucking months so we could move on with our fucking lives, but she always has to bring my fucking name up so she could be relevant because she's irrelevant now. I legit have proof on the next story to show you that it's all bullshit and you can't believe everything on the fucking internet. And you know what? You know what's the most fucked up thing is that a lot of you guys have no idea what happens behind the scenes when we broke up. Has she called me saying that she misses me, how much she loves me? how she did the worst decision in her life and breaking up with me. I legit, like, I legit have proof, okay? So long to the weepy guy taking on all of the blame. In the video, he uses the fact that she hung out with him after the breakup against her, also showing a comment of hers. It reads as follows. Y'all, I had a boyfriend before I met Edward. We met when I was 18. I don't appreciate a lot of these comments that are straight up making up things about me. To which Edward himself replied, SMH dude, this is why social media is so toxic. When this series of stories was posted to YouTube, 
Nicole's friend Anu commented on it, saying, I was a personal witness to the pain and suffering Nikki had to endure post Edward, and I will stand by her in support for her standing up for herself. She was 17 when they started dating, and she has refuted Edward's lies in her Instagram story. When you are in an abusive relationship, your abuser can often make you do things slash lie to protect their image. I have literally experienced the same thing in past relationships. You all need to start believing victims and look at the cold, hard video evidence in front of you, presented by the person victimized in the situation, not a shoddy TikTok comment that he forced her to post. Going over to Nicole's Instagram stories, she not only claimed that she was compelled to write that comment exonerating Edward, but did go on to show that they were already together before she was 18, pointing out that she still had public Instagram posts up from the time when they first met that anyone could go look at. One of these DMs included Edward claiming that he was 16 to her, which was a blatant lie considering he was already 23 years old at the time. But based on old tweets from Edward, he seemed to think that he looked young for his age perhaps lending some credibility to the fact that he thought he could get away with the lie. Multiple videos in her Instagram reels, still up as of writing this video, show Edward as early as April 2016, one even containing an, again, sleeping Nicole. This theme of recording her while she's out without her consent or knowledge just keeps popping up, since in another video, which now seems to have been deleted, a drinking Edward films Nicole, who was still a minor at the time, completely knocked out unconscious, presumably from drinking with him, with hickeys on her chest, while he essentially gloated about having taken Polaroid pictures of her. Nicole goes on to expound upon their difference in age. I was born on November 20th, 1998. His birthday is January 27th, 1992. Many didn't realize our age gap. I posted clues to this so many times and in my videos and no one noticed, like I'm tired. Edward has tried his best to be my friend, just so I wouldn't say shit about this. Also, how am I a gold digger if I was out working with him too? Like we were there at the same hours I filmed. Haha, <laughs> the effort y'all will go through to call me a bitch when he was a full grown man dating a 17 year old. He attended my graduation ceremony. As for Edward's claims about her still having feelings for him and regretting having broken up with him and the footage he took while in her new apartment, Nicole had explanations for those as well. I'm really, really falling for someone sweet and I would like if you just didn't talk to me unless it's business slash about the money you owe me because I feel very connected to this person. Although it is so brand new and I wanna date them without you blowing up my phone and stuff. I'm sorry, but like I told you I'm looking for my soulmate. I'm looking for someone who could never hurt me and I'm taking steps to do that. You should move on. You should let go. I don't feel any romantic love for you anymore and I really haven't for a while. I felt disconnected from you even before I tried to break up with you this last time. My ex is reaching so hard. Every time I ignored him, he would blow up my phone. He kept trying to convince me to be his friend and that's why I even let him into my apartment the first few nights after I moved in. He even took my damn cat. I had to literally run away to New York just to get away from him long enough to rent an apartment. I should have never believed his manipulation tactics. However, I cut him off completely, 100% before the week of Halloween. He also held the money he owed me over my head, so I had to be nice to him or he literally wouldn't give me the money I worked for. It's the principle of it. I am not a gold digger, but I was literally there with him filming every single night. This makes him sharing his recordings of himself in her apartment even more suspect than it already was, because he clearly tried to contextualize them as if they're made up in some capacity, which evidently was not the case. Unfortunately, despite the receipts having been posted, they were only up on ephemeral Instagram stories, so the majority of people were still unaware of the allegations or what was supposedly going on behind the scenes, which meant this whole affair was far from over. As the time passed after their social media drama had reached its peak and it began to die down, Edward and Nicole's respective YouTube channels reflected the fallout. Craniacs, though still retaining a lot of the popularity it had garnered on TikTok and YouTube Shorts, started nosediving in views on its main channel as soon as the allegations were made. Though, Edward continued to post the same exact type of content as before without missing a beat. Only now, with a noticeably absent Nicole. Meanwhile, Nikki, who used to upload these same genre of videos as Craniacs to her personal channel, stopped doing so completely and took a sharp turn to lifestyle and vlogging with her new boyfriend. But before turning over this new leaf completely, she did one pit stop to put the conflict with Edward behind her once and for all. On November 27th, almost two full months after the breakup became public, Nicole posted a video titled, I Was Groomed, Hidden in Plain Sight, which now has over 1 million views. In it, Nicole gives full disclosure 
closure about not just the Craniacs affair, but everything related to it, now in an organized and easily consumable format, with its proceeds being donated to Rain.org, which is America's largest anti-sexual violence organization. Now, I need to make it clear that everything Nicole says is alleged. I wasn't there, and neither were you, as the only people who truly know what happened are Nicole and Edward. That being said, I will recap the experience that she details in her video. Before even getting to the topic of her abusive relationship with Edward, she mentions that before they even knew each other, she'd already been targeted by other groomers because of her visible vulnerability being a troubled teenager who attended a continuation school, which, if you don't know, is essentially a school for students who are considered at risk of not graduating. The first grooming incident she experienced was when she was just 13 years old, being targeted by a guy who was at least 21 years of age. Then, when she was 14, a guy who was almost 20 did the same. Nicole explains that, by the the time she met Edward, when she was 17, she was already depressed and struggled to keep friendships, meaning she was socially vulnerable. And growing up, I honestly, unfortunately, seemed to be the perfect prey for these types of people. She also reveals that Edward would have her lie and go behind her mother's back to see him, saying instead that she was going over to her friend's houses, when in actuality, she was going over to his, where he made a habit of giving her alcohol. Remember all of those instances of her being filmed while asleep? Often, it was the case that Edward had her purposely drink herself until she was unconscious, giving her hard liquor, which she wasn't used to drinking. So during the course of the next few days, after we started talking in April, I basically started lying to my mom and tell her that I was going to like this friend's house or this friend's house for a sleepover every single night. And in reality, I was going out with him and we were drinking together all night. On our first date, Together, he took me to a park after we went to the liquor store and he bought a bottle of Peach New Amsterdam and Cactus Cooler. Mind you, this is their first date. And according to her account, he not only got her blackout drunk, but when she woke up, she found she had puked all over herself and that he had taken off her shirt, proceeding to basically gloat about how he could have taken advantage of the situation, but didn't, as if it was some kind of merit and not basic common decency, especially considering he was the one who made her blackout drunk in the first place. I don't mean to satirize this obviously horrible story, but his immediate next move was nothing other than asking Nicole for an IMDb review of Lil Edward. So was he deterred by me vomiting all over myself and him all almost getting in trouble for buying alcohol for a minor? No, of course not. In fact, he began texting me, asking me if I thought that his dick was big or not, because apparently before I had completely blacked out, I had been touching his Dick. Yet another highlight of Edward and Nicole's early dating was that, while Nicole was passed out drunk over at his house, he would leave her alone sleeping on his bed, while he'd go out and meet up with his other girlfriend, who was an adult, and would continue to see him, despite having full knowledge that he was seeing a minor on the side. At one point, even trying to fight Nicole for him. And not only knew that I was 17, was weirdly jealous of me, and even tried to fight me one time at the Lakewood Mall. This girl, this girl, had the audacity to message me today and act like she didn't do all that. Like this was a grown woman that not only knew that her ex was dating a minor, but was also happily willing to have sex with him. To add to the list of people who were aware of what was happening but allowed it to go on was Edward's family. When she was still a minor and her mom moved to Texas, leaving her behind, she went to live in Edward's house together with his entire family who didn't mind that he was seeing a minor per se, but that it might affect them negatively for legal reasons. You knew I was 17. In fact, she knew I was 17 to the point at which when I initially moved in, she was pissed. Why would she be pissed? Because she knew I was an underage minor. Not just for moral reasons, but for legal reasons, this was all, this was all bad. It was during this time that Edward would provide for her, as he would call it, which actually meant giving her toothpaste and a steady supply of Taco Bell, perhaps explaining his incessant tweets about his bowel movements, along with a hefty daily intake of alcohol, which effectively made her an alcoholic. For these oh-so-charitable gifts, he would tell her she should be grateful and not complain about his actions towards her. Eventually, she did get a job and moved out of his house and in with her sister. But by the time this happened, it was far too late as she was already wrapped completely around his finger. She couldn't even go to sleep before he did without being accused of cheating, which was particularly stressful since Edward usually went to sleep at 4 a.m. And Nicole had to wake up early to attend her job. Along with this, she couldn't be anywhere other men might be, which made it extremely difficult to have friends outside of the relationship. It got to the point 
where, even though she hadn't cheated on him, she began doubting herself, wondering if she actually did during some kind of Walter White fugue state. I literally, it was because of situations like this that I literally started doubting my own reality. I started questioning myself. I was like, did I cheat on him? Even knowing that I had not cheated on him, I questioned to myself, did I? Like, what have I done wrong? Like, it, it seriously felt like reality based on how much anger and force he was putting behind his words. The red flags were simply piling up on top of each other. What's interesting to remember is that, despite his extreme paranoia about her cheating on him, he would have no problem, during the Craniacs era, plastering the video's thumbnails with sexually exploitative pictures of her. But hey, I guess it's okay if the only people your girlfriend is being sexualized by are strangers on the internet. At age 19, Edward's worst fears came true as Nicole began developing feelings for another guy. And when she told him this, he began doing what psychologists call love bombing, which is when a narcissist overwhelms someone with compliments and displays of affection in order to to guilt trip them and prevent them from doing what the narcissist does not want them to do. If the victim goes on to try and exact some sort of justice from their situation, they're the ones who look cruel or insensitive, and not the narcissist. In any event, I will stave off a number of details here, but they go on to have sex and Edward does a kind of what is called stealthing, reproductive coercion or gray rape, meaning he attempted to impregnate her without her consent. This is not only obviously a terrible thing to do to someone, but something that will seemingly become very illegal soon. But according to him, he did this because he loved her. There was no mistakes being made. He every single time pulled out without mistake in order to not get me pregnant, of course. It was just the procedure. There was never any close calls, no mistake whatsoever. This time, he came inside me intentionally. And I think he did this because I was breaking up with him and he knew that he needed to do something to get me to stay. Though it was very clear this had greatly disturbed and upset Nikki, Edward would not let up on the love bombing, taking her on a spontaneous trip to Las Vegas to see what would happen, which, according to Nicole, resulted in a series of very loud and public fights. Technically, this was the first time they'd broken up, but due to Edward's antics, Nicole began blaming herself and ended up not following through. Having lost the will to end the relationship, they'd return from Las Vegas to continue producing content for the Arcade Craniacs channel. Though so Edward would continue to ignore any of her video ideas, and even after the channel started making enough money that she no longer had to work, Edward ensured that she'd keep working at Target to help teach her a lesson about real work. Again, this is the guy that runs away from people wearing Among Us costumes. Kiss this ass, alright? Kiss this booty! Yeah, 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 you like that, huh? That's what happens when KJ and Edward find you, you have to That's kiss bad. this ass. Once the switch to 3AM content happened and there was a ramp up in money, the AdSense was directly linked to his bank account. And whenever Nicole would bring up the topic of her receiving a paycheck of some sort, he would become irate, claiming that she was being materialistic, which she later echoed after they broke up for good. Her insistence paid off though, as she did start getting paid eventually. One week before their new Chuck E. Cheese content went extremely viral all over social media, but particularly TikTok, Nicole tried once again to break up with him, and again, she failed. This is ironic considering that people who commented on their social media posts all collectively guffawed at how much they were couple goals. In order to promote and maintain this public image of a healthy relationship, Edward had Nicole go through all of her Instagram posts and get rid of anything from before she was 18 that showed them together. That is, with one exception, intentionally on Nicole's part, much to Edward's chagrin. When someone noticed this proof of her being a minor when Edward began dating her and posted a TikTok about it, he got very angry and had her post that comment disproving it. Regardless of this effort to keep up appearances, the dam was beginning to show cracks. Fortunately, for archival purposes, those posts that Edward didn't want people to see had been saved, meaning that Nicole successfully restored them once she chose to speak out on it. And when he found out about this, he was pissed and he forced me to leave a comment saying that, no, this isn't true, this is a lie. Which basically is honestly dumb that anybody even uses that comment as proof because literally the whole TikTok is proof, irrefutably so, that we at the very least knew each other or were flirting or something when I was a minor. In an unknowingly serendipitous act, Edward introduced Nicole to Anu, the friend she would eventually move out to New York with in order to get away with him. Interestingly enough, he only did this because he didn't want to have to put in the effort of giving her relationship advice and found her annoying. So he referred her to Nicole, who ended up getting relationship advice from her. After making her plans with Anu to go on their trip to New York, Nicole tried quitting the channel. To the mysterious 
furious reply from Edward that the channel was unquittable. However, he did allow her to take a break, as long as it was temporary. During this uneasy period, Nicole would go on to try to break up with Edward four times, all to no avail, because he would not only beg and plead for her not to do it, but make it as difficult as possible for it to happen by watching her every move. However, reconciliation at this point was completely impossible, since, according to Nicole, a situation of domestic violence had taken place. I told him, hey, I don't want to be with you because you groomed me, you sexually assaulted me, you took advantage of me, you used me, and also, I don't want to be with anybody who tried to choke me out. As Nicole recounts it, in one of their heated arguments, he would punch her in the arm several times, to the point where it was black and blue, the way it would remain for several weeks, and proceed to choke her against the wall. To add insult to injury, he would get frustrated in the following recording sessions when, during the taking of the thumbnail image, she'd be unable to show her cleavage because, without her sleeved jacket on, the bruises would be visible. He punched me a bunch of times in the arm so hard that it literally turned black and blue. Like for several weeks, my arm was black and blue and he grabbed me by my throat and shoved my head against the wall of our apartment and threatened to hit me again. His justification for having hit her was that during another fight of theirs, when he was speeding and driving under the influence simultaneously, suggesting that he'd drive off a cliff while intermittently hitting himself in the head and hitting the pizza box she had on her lap while yelling, hit me, she hit him in the leg. Obviously, getting physically violent in a relationship is always a bad thing no matter who's doing it. But I have a sneaking suspicion that the fact that he's 30 pounds heavier than her is that he actually tried to choke her makes his aggression at least a little more extreme. But what do I know? Another of Edward's go-to strategies to prevent the oncoming breakup was to threaten to commit suicide, though he would give up pretty easily when called on his bluff. He also threatened to kill himself multiple times during these times when I was breaking up with him. One time in particular, he threatened to kill himself and walked over to the kitchen to get a kitchen knife and held it to his wrist. And I said, you're not gonna do that. You're scared of death. And I was right, he didn't do it. The day before Nicole's trip to New York, she would tell him that she'd already partially signed papers to move into a new apartment, which prompted him to wait for her to sleep and start rapidly going through her phone. He would find Nicole's DM conversations with Anu and proceed to blame her for everything that led to the breakup. That is, while he would be screaming, throwing stuff around, threatening to kill himself, and at one point, even pretending to have a heart attack to try and keep Nicole from leaving him. Remind you of anything? You know what I mean? Okay. I'll get a heart attack. Uh, get it? Oh, no, no. I'm not getting a heart attack, just my hat. Eventually, when this tactic failed, he would just move on from it and pretend that nothing happened. His Hail Mary attempt was to physically block her exit, holding her by her wrist to stop her from leaving, which, too, failed, as Nicole's sister was waiting outside to drive her to the airport. He would continue to guilt trip her and blow up her phone with private messages, and though she would oblige him until he finally sent her the check for the work on the Craniacs channel, when Nicole started dating her new boyfriend, Matt, communications between them ceased entirely. Though he would try to reach even her friends and family members to try and get her to talk to him, eventually the situation settled. Edward posted to his Instagram saying, I take these accusations very seriously. I will be contacting the proper channels and will return with a response very soon. I ask that the fans please be patient at this time as I sort this matter legally. Please give me time and I will respond properly and with legal representation. Thank you. A video was posted to the Arcade Craniac second channel called My Response, though it is now private and only visible through people's reposts and reactions to it. In it, he reiterates that he will be pursuing these matters legally, suggesting some kind of defamation lawsuit, while reassuring his viewers that he will continue posting videos regularly. At the end of the day, this is not a game, okay? We just can't go off of he said, she said type stuff. As of now, I am no longer going to be talking about this on the internet because this is something that needs to be sorted out privately. I do plan to address the allegations against me after speaking to my lawyer. However, it's extremely unlikely that this will ever make it out of the internet, as even if he were to try and disprove any single one of Nikki's claims, the fact of the matter is he started dating her when she was a minor. So if any of this ever actually went to court, 
he would be setting himself up to instantly become the defendant. If we are to believe that, at least that video where Edward was crying for her was remotely genuine, then he did get his wish, as the Craniacs channel has seriously dwindled in views, while all of Nikki's videos gained popularity pretty linearly. After her having left the channel, she was replaced with two of Edward's friends, one of which is usually seen wearing a cheap Halloween demon mask. Though still getting good amounts of views on its shorts here and there, and still collaborating with Lissy, the channel screeched to a halt as the main videos are struggling to even get 100,000 views, a mere shadow of the Craniac's past audience reach. The current viewership most likely consisting of kids that were too young to understand what happened between Edward and Nicole. With this in mind, the future of Arcade Craniacs is very uncertain, if it'll have any future at all. Just so many freaking memories, man. It, it, was, it was so cool, man. So cool and just... Just really sad, man, that, you know, Chuck E. Cheese itself, the whole corporation, man. I've been Turkey Tom. Thanks for watching. And until next time, leave me alone. I've heard it a thousand times before. But it's just not that far.